my, my initial encounter with music, of course, was in the kitchen of my mother and my grandmother, but collectively was in the cotton field of Elgin, Texas. So I saw no us and them. It was all us. And to this day, that's the most sacred place I've ever heard music performed in is the cotton field of Elgin, Texas. So I don't, I don't let a room take that from me. Take from me the fact that when my grandfather would sing a certain pitch, when the sun is over their head and it's unbearable, um, When he would say, I love the Lord, he heard my cry, then the rest of us would say, I heard, I love the Lord, he heard my cry. And then he said, bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Bread of heaven, feed. Then somebody say, "Yow, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, mercy, yes, Lord." So just because I'm sitting in a box seat at Carnegie Hall or the Kimmel Center, and I feel that presence of the ancestors in what I have struggled and given my blood to produce. I'm not, I can't say, yes, Lord. I can't say, yeah, hallelujah. I can't say that. If I can't say that, then something's wrong. Then all that I experience is, 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 is a lie. All that I experience is nothing. All that I've experienced is second to any other culture. And I don't see that. So if I, if I, feel, if I feel the need to testify, that's what I'm going to do, and I always encourage the people to do the same. Because what would it be without the people? Whose world is it? Whose land is it? Whose sky is it? Whose gold is it? Whose book is it? Whose truth is it? Whose song is it? Whose blood is it? Whose law is it? Whose mind is it? Whose story is it? Whose grave is it? Whose pain is it? Whose war is it? Whose I was, I was very fortunate because I lived on my grandmother and grandfather's farm for the first five years of my life. I never had shoes. I never wore shoes. So my best friend was the sky, mm, ever-changing paintings, mm, the river, the sound of the river, the sound of the dove, the sound of the wind in this huge oak tree, the sound of the guineas, ding, 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 ding. all those sounds are exactly what informs my music. When I went to the university for seven days, and that was seven years too many, they were trying to take these sounds away from me because they didn't understand the sounds I was making. But I had sense enough to know that these sounds didn't come from humans and that I must protect them, be mindful of them. So I, I uh, sold my composition book, got my money back from that, got me a sleeping bag and went into the forest. <laughs>
course, there was Pangea, the, the physical example of the oneness of everything and everyone, right? That, 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 that there was Pangea, that was the land mass. <clears throat> well, the spiritual land mass of humanity is music. And no, and, and no matter where you go, you'll hear the common human tonality if you listen for it. But if you go saying, what I hear is greater than this, you won't hear the commonality. And therefore you miss out on all of that richness. But music is the spiritual pangea of humanity.